This podcast is sponsored by Vicon, the Academy Award-winning developer of motion capture products for the life science, entertainment, and engineering industries. Vicon provides cutting-edge hardware and software with the highest accuracy. Shogun, Vicon's visual effects software, developed specifically for the needs of the VFX community, captures full-body and high-fidelity fingers effortlessly in real time and delivers robust, accurate, reliable data. Shogun now includes custom-developed virtual production tools to power your next-level project. Find out more at www.vicon.com. Oh, hello, Internet. This is Troy Baker, and I'm here with your lovely, very, very British host, Victoria Atkin. And this is the Performance Capture Podcast. So essentially, motion capture performers, like all the other performers, are here to tell stories. <laughs> and then they're like... <laughs> You mean there, there are actors in video games? I thought it was animation. I kind of created my position. Like nobody said, oh, you know, here you go to school to become a performance capture producer. I pretty much created my own career. I had done so much work. I felt like it was time for me to give back to the community that was so good to me. You know, the dots can tell if you're lying. Hi, welcome back to the Performance Capture Podcast with me, Victoria Atkin. Today we have a really incredible guest. I would like you to answer, what is your name and where did you grow up? Uh, hi, Victoria. My name is Christian Cantamessa. I grew up in Italy, though I have to say I've kind of lived a little bit all over. Uh, I moved to the UK when, it, when I was in my mid-20s. I lived in Scotland for a while. I moved to California in my 30s. Uh, now I'm in Los Angeles. So um, that's also the reason why my accent is so messed up and confusing. I was wondering what your accent was going to be, especially spending some time in Scotland. An Italian-Scottish mix I thought might be interesting, but your voice is fantastic. Um, can you tell us about what you do, your title, or and where you work? Sure. I'm a, I'm a director. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that title. Um, I think it it, it it applies to um, everything I do in uh, in the world of film, um, commercials, and uh, well, of course performance capture. And and at the moment, one of my clients is uh, Microsoft, and I'm working with the initiative, um, their studio in Santa Monica. Um, so that's uh, what's uh, keeping me busy at the moment. Great. And we always ask um, every person that comes on this podcast, every professional that's working in the industry that's of a, of a really high standard, how would you best describe performance capture? Because it's this huge umbrella term. And my one of my goals is to educate everybody on what this is. So give us your best shot. What do you, how would you describe it? So performance capture to me is a, is a wonderful tool to um, bring raw human emotion into the world of digital technology. We look at anything that is uh, computer generated and it's uh, whether it's uh, VFX, CGI, video games, and it's, and it's always a struggle to, um, to bring some of the uh, um, humanity and, and a rawness and uh, the analog world into into the uh, realm of uh, zeros and ones and i and i do think that performance capture is an incredible tool to um, to inject humanity and emotion especially when it comes to capturing the um the performance of super talented um actors because they really unlock the true nature of the characters that they inhabit. And now we have this incredible tool that allows us to acquire some of that magic that is a little intangible and kind of put it into our virtual world. So how did you discover performance capture and how did you become involved? What was your first project that you did that involved this kind of technology? So I, I started in the sort of world of video game writing and directing back in the, uh, God, back in the mid nineties where there was no performance capture and motion capture probably was a uh, super high tech, uh, you know, experimental technology at the time. So uh, I'm going back there because my experience with, uh, the world of technology and, and gaming and, and, and bringing cinematic uh, 
a flavor to them sort of started uh, quite some time ago when I was working on cameras and, and working on, uh, you know, g- getting sort of a filmic look to adventure games. And um, and sort of the all sort of started and developed from there. So I kind of saw how the industry kind of evolved and started to embrace technologies like uh, motion capture and then eventually performance capture. And as I sort of got involved, I, um, I I really sort of fell in love with the potential of of the medium and the potential of the the performance capture technology in particular. Um, I would say that my first project they really brought together everything that we could call performance capture today was a beautiful Warner Brothers game called Shadow of Mordor. Oh, yeah. um, that was that was a game where. I, I was really able to bring in the um, the latest technology that, that was available uh, from face capture to multiple actors in the volume, you know, really high level uh, cameras, um, also the ability to shoot a camera, um, you know, track a camera in, in real time while we're, while we're shooting the, uh, the actors as well in the volume, which is very important to me for the way I work um, because I come from a film background. And so I, I always want to inject sort of like a point, a point of view into the scene, which, which I think is important. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was, that was my first exposure to the sort of all the bells and whistles uh, performance capture technology. And I, you know, I, I would never uh, go back from, from that. Yeah. Where was that shot? I think one of our, our previous guests was involved in that. Was Troy Baker in that with you? Troy Baker was the lead of, um, of yeah. that game. It was uh, Talion, so. the, uh, the lead character, yeah. Mm-hmm. I had some experience working on Shadow of War, just doing some voices, but um, the performance capture was was pretty cool. I got to see that. And where did they have a, a stage at Warner Brothers, or where did you, where did you shoot that? We shot Shadow of, Shadow of Mordor um, here in Manhattan Beach, uh, oh, okay. just up just up the street um, at the Manhattan Beach Studios. Um, I think so Manhattan Beach was chosen um, just because the technology they were, were using at the time was yeah. inherited from um, James Cameron's team. And okay. we did work with a, with a number of uh, technicians and, and, and a little bit of the technology that was used for Avatar. So, so I think we were in that stage at the time because that was the stage that was... Uh, that had been used for for Avatar. That's interesting. We've just been talking to one of our guests um, on the podcast uh, that worked on the Avatar project. She actually was the first prototype model for Natari, which is really very cool. Um, All right, so um, that's really cool. Um, So what is your favorite thing about motion capture? Um, Why do you you like using this medium? I know you, you talked about how you've how you started off and your first major project, but what's your favorite thing? If somebody says to you, "Okay, Christian, we're going to use you and we want to do this in performance capture," what gets you excited about that? I get really excited by the possibility of um, you know really using cutting edge technology to bring performances um, to life, and there's there's a number of ways to do it, and um, Animators that are listening to this, I'm sure, will uh, will be quick to remind me and everyone that um, they also have uh, uh, the magic sauce in, in in what the in the great tradition of animation uh, that that you know is hundreds of years old. But but what I do enjoy of something like motion capture and performance capture is that we're there um, on stage. Uh, there is a number of factors together. It's that sort of like theater film shoot where you're able to capture uh, the nuance of a moment, a reaction to a line, something spontaneous that happens that is not studied at the drawing table, but is actually just coming from that inner core of a person. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I do think that whenever that happens, the technology really shows its power, and um, and whether it's a facial reaction, whether it's uh, an improvisation that just comes from the from from the moment, the, the ability to really 
capture the the instant of a performance, to me, that's that's the reason to go for a performance capture. I always think it's the ultimate hybrid between TV, film, and and theatre, and that it is the only technology that can actually that we as actors are so free and that we're able to, we don't have any props or costume or set and we're able to really show our truth and our souls can emanate through this medium that gets to capture the essence of us and the story and what you as a director bring and how you tell it. That's absolutely right. I, I, I completely agree. Uh, it, you know, it, it brings from theater the, the reliance on an actor's inner world and an imaginative world because there is nothing. There is, there is no, there is no costumes. There is no uh, sets. There is, it's, it's, you're just there, and, and you have to use, you, you know, your, your imagination to, to, to bring everything to life. It's, it's sort of very, sort of like actors studio, Meinsner, uh, mm-hmm. you know, at, at the core, and then, and then you have, I, you know, like I said, I, I, I come from a film tradition, so you, you also have all the nuance of like being able to capture a camera and being able to um, stage, stage a scene in a way that can, can be very cinematic. And then, and then you have animation because of course, everything that comes out of performance capture, no matter how perfect the take was and how good the you know, technology is and how nicely placed the markets were at the end of the day, there is a, 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 an animation component of it that kind of brings it all together. And so it's almost like saying it's the best to fold these worlds. You know, you, you just get the cream at the top from the technology that, that is emerging in film, the technology and the artistry of animation, the, the power of emotion from theater, you kind of bring it all together. And it's for us uh, and you at uh, the ultimate close-up as well when we have it on the head cams as well as the standing cameras. The most unflattering yeah. uh, close-up that you can ever, <laughs> uh, you know, you can ever be. If you, uh, if you yeah, like a close-up oh, up your nose. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> 10 inches away from your face with a really wide lens. <laughs> um, it's the don't ever shoot a close-up that way for a, move, for a movie unless you're Terry Gilliam. But, uh, <laughs> but it works really well for what we're doing. And also, like, frankly, it gives the director something to do with the actors on the day, on the set, because, it, you know, if, if you're on a beautiful soundstage or on location, um, there is an element of like, OK, great, we're here, we're seeing it, we're inhabiting this character, we put on the wig, we wear the shoes, we walk onto the spaceship. And, and and maybe as a director, you've done that job ahead of time with a production designer and the DP, and now you sort of focus on something else. But with performance capture, you need to actually create that imagery for the actors and for the crew as well. If you have a if you have a camera operator, you need to tell him what he's actually going to see, and 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 of course the actors as well. And and it kind of keeps you as a director also a little more engaged because you're much more of a storyteller, you know, around the campfire trying to create a world for everybody, as opposed to um, you know sitting at Video Village and making sure that you know that there is no that there is no dust in the gate or that sort of stuff. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know about you, I was talking, I don't th- I think I've talked about this before, um, and how much I, I love the playtime of this. Uh, my favorite thing, I get on the, the stage, I'm in my suit, and the whole world is mine to paint. And the great thing about it is that my imagination, the picture that I paint in my mind when I'm on the stage doesn't have to be the same as yours. You know, what, what we see, as long as we're, we're painting this picture that we all believe in. I went to Beverly Hills Library when I was studying for... Evie Fry for Assassin's Creed Syndicate and I was looking at pictures for Victorian London and trying to kind of step in sort of Mary Poppins style into the painting. Uh, do you use lots of pictures or imagery to help you uh, build the build the, the image in your mind or how do you get how do you get there? Usually there is there's a lot of work that's already gone into the into the project um, whether, whether it's a, a video game or um, the shoot for a commercial or whatever the performance capture shoot is for, um, by the time you show up on the day, there has been um, a quite mm-hmm. significant visual development um, so that you know where the walls are and you know 
I guess you have way more access than we do as actors. <laughs> I actually, I actually like to be involved in the visual development of the projects I work on. Again, I, I consider myself more of a, more of a visual person than a, a writerly prose person, and mm -hmm. um, and so I, I kind of do have an interest in in the visuals of the piece for sure. Um, I, I, I do, however bring some of my mental images like you did to to the stage not necessarily mm -hmm. on a piece of paper but alive in in my imagination and yeah. sometimes you do all that research and you do all that prep and then on the day you just realize that what uh the uh the talent is doing is uh steering the scene in another direction and you you just have to go with it you just have to accept that yeah. maybe the scene is going to work better if we rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees and we are, you know, we, we just throw our prep away and we just go with what's, uh, what feels genuine for the moment. That comes to another question that I have about your workflow of game design. Where do you begin with that? Because that seems like such a monumental task and process. So if I'm involved in the uh, game design of a project, I, you know, I, I obviously wear that hat uh, separately from my director's hat. Um, it, in general, whether or not I'm the game designer, the uh, if you're shooting for a video game, it is immensely important to know how everything that's uh, being shot is going to relate to everything that's interactive and it's handed off to the player. So regardless of what the game is going to be and what the player moves are going to be, there are moments where the game hands off to the cinematics and then the cinematics hand off back to the game. And those are the times where everybody needs to be really, really precise and on the same page because otherwise you're not going to be able to smoothly uh, connect the two moments and then it's going to feel artificial, it's going to feel like something intrudes into the other. Cinematics in games are at their best when they're seamless. Um, when mm -hmm. when you go seamlessly from playing to uh, watching a short moment and then going back to playing and, and almost you didn't even notice it. That can only happen if whoever is on the game design side and whoever is on the uh, cinematic side uh, really kind of work closely and, and hand in hand and, um, and know what they want to get out of it. So um, we always ask if there's anything that you want to add about a specific experience, maybe something funny or silly that happened on the performance capture stage that you wouldn't mind sharing with us. So I would say that maybe an experience or experiences that stay with me the most might not necessarily be the funny ones, but, but maybe more like the ones that left an impression on me and sort of yeah. made me made me grow as a person. I think that, that every shoot I'm on, whether it's live action or performance capture, just changes me every time. I, I I'm just there with, with people that have that bring so much of themselves and mm -hmm. and you just learn. It's 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 crazy because every every project you just show up and it's you think you've done it a hundred times before and it always <laughs> feels like it's the first time. Yeah. Um, if I were to bring an an experience to to, to this podcast today, I, I would I would maybe say there, there was this scene that we were shooting in Shadow of Mortar, which is the opening of the game, and it's um, it's a very sort of dramatic, uh, incredibly violent, uh, tragic scene where the protagonist Troy Baker is being held by. Um, these forces of darkness while uh, his family has been uh, slaughtered in front of his eyes. So a very emotionally draining scene with a lot of crying and screaming and violence, like I said. And, and on that day on the stage, we actually had everybody uh, involved in the shoot at the same time being captured. So we had, you know, Nolan North, John DiMaggio, Troy Baker, uh, like everyone was, was there. Um, and and so it was a complicated shoot. And to add it to that, I was shooting the camera and, and tracking it at the same time because I really wanted to to have the point of view of the audience match the point of view of this ethereal spirit that's been summoned by this 
terrible ritual that is being performed. So I really wanted to connect the audience to to the supernatural world of the story and have a camera that's flowing in and out to the action uninterrupted. It, it just made the whole shoot very technical and very difficult. And we needed to do take after take after take after take because there was always something that um, wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that experience stayed with me because everybody was bringing everything they had in terms of pain and suffering and and being real in, in this moment when somebody you love is getting killed or is dying and and then and then you need to do it again and then yeah. you need to do it again and i'm there actually having to tell them okay we're gonna do this again you're you're gonna watch your wife <laughs> die get through that again <laughs> and yeah. and i do remember the way everybody dealt with it from the crew to the talent uh you know needing to take 10 minutes to just walk away and, and, you know, somebody would crack a joke, you know, John DiMaggio would, 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 cr- would crack a joke. And, and I'm sure Nolan had a couple of figure. jokes. Nolan <laughs> had a couple of jokes, but you could tell that even those jokes were, uh, were a coping mechanism. They were, yeah, they were cool. actually trying to get a moment of recuperation before going back mm-hmm. to work. And then, ev- and everybody kind of needed that. And what that left me was, really the sense of gratitude to everyone that was involved on, on that day, because when eventually we got it, and, and of course it's in the game, um, you know, I, I just, I, I was just filled with appreciation for everybody just kind of being willing to, to go there and push themselves so hard that, that they needed to take breaks in between. That's a wonderful piece of experience that as an actor, I really, it, it's, it's so nice to hear the appreciation of of what we do as a craft from uh, somebody of your stature. Just grateful for us being able to bring these things that we, in a strange way, like to do. We're, it's very cathartic for us, but again, it is things that we tap into as a craft, knowing that we are um, that we're appreciated for that. And uh, and I I thank you for that. Um, so a uh, couple of questions to finish off here. Um, have you got any practical advice for anybody that wants to that's listening that wants to get into performance capture as a director. Um, we've had other people, you know, telling us that to learn how to be a film director first or um, what, what advice would you, would you give? My advice would be related to the way I started and, and, and the way I got my first job and any, and any other job after that was to basically get involved in a project which, whichever way I could and then do the best work I could, and then an opportunity would present itself to to direct. I I I can't say that it's the entertainment industry is incredibly competitive, and 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 telling someone you know go out and be a director is is very difficult because it is basically like telling someone go go into that company and become the CEO. Yeah. I, I think that um, more often than not, what happened to me is that I was hired as a writer. I was hired as a consultant. I was hired in some capacity. And then somebody saw my work, talked to me. Um, there was an opportunity. And then I was able to um, seize on that opportunity. Even Shadow of Mortar, I, I got you, that job because I was writing on it. Yeah, you. it sounds like as a personality and the reason that you've had all this success is that you do seize opportunities and that you are continuously growing and learning, which I think is very key to people at any level or any experience that that want to grow and, and build in this this uh, industry. Um, I would like to ask what's happening now at your company Sleep Deprivation Labs? Anything uh, exciting that we can we can know about? I would say the most exciting for me right now is the work I'm doing for the uh, the initiative which is um a Microsoft uh, studio here in Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. Um the the project is unannounced um but it's, uh, I'm working with some incredible people um, and, and I'm very excited by the project that we're uh, putting together. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm involved with that. Um, and I always have a million other things that I'm kind of developing or, or pushing on to the side. And I'm uh, you know, working on my next live action uh, feature. So that right. hopefully going to, get um going after 
we are able to shoot live action again in a, in a world without a pandemic. That's right. Can um, you tell us a little bit more about your company and what you specialize in? My company um, sort of is a all-in-one sort of narrative consulting uh, firm, game game design consulting, and also for everything that's um, motion capture, performance capture, directing, um, and and those sorts of services. It's, it's fundamentally me and a, and a and a small team of collaborators that I work with, and we like to uh, jump into a project um, and take care of the narrative needs of our clients, whether it's script doctoring or taking it all the way to um, the performance capture stage. And uh, how can we find you? The last question is, how can we find you on social media? Is there a way to connect with you? Are you on LinkedIn? How, how do people get in touch? Or how do they, do you have a website that people can learn a little bit more about your company? Or Sure. Well, I'm on um, I'm on LinkedIn. Obviously, my my name. If you if you search for Christian Cantamassa, you will find me on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter uh, at C um, If people want to follow me there, and my, the website is um, www.sleepdeprivationlab.com. For people that are, you know, it's a very small um, internet um, setup. Um, there's just a little bit of information on you know what we've done and how to contact uh, the company and um, if people are interested they can sort of uh, learn a little bit more over there. Thank you so much for joining us today, Christian. I know everybody in the performance capture world that's going to be listening to this is going to be so grateful for you sharing your experience and your knowledge. You have some amazing credits behind you, and I am really excited to maybe one day be directed by you, but also to see your career grow and to um, look forward to more different things, particularly with live action feature films as well as performance capture to um, to watch those and, and see you continue to grow as an, as a director and artist. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for having me on on, on your podcast. Season three of the Performance Capture podcast was recorded and edited at Soundbox Studios in Los Angeles. Soundbox LA is the founding studio in the Soundbox Studio Group, a collective of talent-owned and operated boutique voiceover studios with multiple locations in the Los Angeles area and Southern Colorado. You can find out more at soundbox.la. We'd like to send out a huge thanks to Soundbox Studio City's very own Ryan Riveros for editing the episodes of Season 2 and now Season 3. The multi-talented Ryan is also the composer of our theme music.